most gracious and dear loving heavenly father baba yetu wa neema na wa upendo wa mbinguni this morning once again asubuhi ya leo mara nyingine tena we approach your throne of mercy and tuna, tunakaribia kiti chako cha rehema we are believing and trusting in you tukikuamini na wewe that father you call us here for a purpose baba umetuita hapa kwa kusudi you are here to speak to us na uko tuko hapa uko hapa kutunenea you are here heavenly father to transform our lives uko hapa kubadilisha maisha yetu you are here blessed father to minister to the needs of your children uko hapa baba wa baraka kuhudumia mahitaji ya watoto wako yes our faces differ this morning kama tu nyuso zetu zinavyotofautiana asubuhi ya leo so our needs are different hata ndivyo hivyo mahitaji yetu ni tofauti. You are still Jehovah Jireh. Na baba wewe bado ni Jehovah Jire. You are still the provider of all of our needs. Bado wewe ni unatupatia mahitaji yetu yote. And we believe that in this word of life nasi tunaamini katika neno hili la uzima all of our needs are in this word. Mahitaji yetu yote yapo katika neno. If only ni wewe pekee unaweza ukatupatia Lord may you open our eyes and hearts this morning Oh baba ufungue macho yetu na mioyo yetu asubuhi ya leo so that you may see you ili kwamba tukuone And Father I stand before you this morning Na baba nasimama mbele zako asubuhi ya leo I yield myself completely to you Najitoa mwenyewe kwako kabisa May you come and take full control this morning Father Na baba uje utwae uongozi wote baba May you remove all human elements uondoe chembe chembe zote za kibinadamu that it may be you speaking this morning ili baba utumie unitumie mwenyewe baba all the preparations will come to nothing na maandalizi yote si chochote sana if you don't come down yourself kama wewe haujashuka chini mwenyewe to come and speak to your children na kunena na watoto wako. We invite you blessed Lord. Tunakualika baba yetu wa baraka. Promised in your word. Uliahidi katika neno lako. That if there is two or three gathered in your name. Kwamba walipo wawili wa tatu wakusanyika katika jina lako. You will be in our midst. Wewe utakuwa katikati yao. We believe you are here this morning. Tunaamini uko hapa asubuhi ya leo. Bless heavenly father our precious Kambarage our pastor. Mbaliki baba yetu wa mbinguni ndugu yetu Kambarage mchungaji wetu. Oh Lord God you put it in his heart to arrange these meetings. Ambaye umeweka mioyoni mwake kuandaa mikutano hii. Bless him father bless his efforts. Ba, mbaliki bwana mbariki juhudi zake. Bless his ministries our prayer. Bariki uh, huduma yake ni maombi yetu. Bless his family also father is our prayer. Bariki familia yake baba hayo ni maombi yetu Bless pia. all the ministers that are here this morning. Bariki wa huduma wote walioko hapa subu ya leo. We are happy together together our blessed Lord as brothers and sisters of like precious faith. Tuko na furaha kukusanyika pamoja kama ndugu na dada wenye imani moja ya thamani. As we commit everything to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Tunapokabidhi mambo yote kwako baba yetu wa mbinguni. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Amina amina amina. God bless you saints. Mungu awabariki watakatifu. We are just in happy to be here. Tuna kwa hakika tuna furaha kuwepo mali hapa. And we believe that God is going to help us. Na tunaamini kwamba Mungu atakwenda kutusaidia. We believe that God is going to speak to us this morning. Tunaamini kwa mnajem naamini Mungu atatunenea sisi asubuhi ya leo. Because indeed that's what we are here for. Kwa kweli hakika sisi tuko hapa kwa ajili hiyo. We have come to hear from him tumekuja kumsikia yeye and he never disappoints na yeye hajatuangusha and we really just want to greet you in the wonderful name of the lord jesus na christ nataka tu kuwasalimu nyie katika jina la ajabu la bwana yesu christ and really want to thank god na tunataka kumshukuru mungu who made it possible for us to be here aliyefanya iwezekane sisi tuwepo mali hapa and we are not uh, here just on a visit na tuko hapa tu kutembelea we are here for fellowship tuko hapa kwa ushirika and we believe that uh, as we are gathered in his name na tunaamini kwamba tunapokusanyika katika jina lake he is in our midst yeye yu katikati yetu and uh, i indeed again just want to thank our precious pastor na kwa kweli nataka kumshukuru mchungaji wetu wa thamani for the invitation kwa mwaliko and uh, the lord who brought us together many many years ago na Mungu aliyetuleta pamoja miaka mingi mingi iliyopita has kept us together ametutunza pamoja and we really just appreciate his love and na, friendship nami na furahia upendo wake na urafiki and may god richly bless you na Mungu akubariki sana
And this morning by the grace of Almighty God, na asubuhi ya leo kwa neema ya Bwana wetu mwenyezi, we just want to speak on a, 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 a familiar subject. Tunataka tuongee tu uh, somo la kawaida nalofahamika because uh, you know there's nothing new in this message unajua hakuna kitu kipya kwenye ujumbe huu all the mysteries have been revealed siri zote zimefunuliwa and the bible teaches us that all the revealed things belong to us na biblia inatuambia kwamba mambo yote yaliyofunuliwa ni ya kwetu every part of the message belongs to us na kila sehemu ya ujumbe ni ya kwetu there is no complicated part hakuna sehemu ngumu ngumu There is no difficult part. Hakuna sehemu ngumu. It's all for the bride to Yote even enjoy. Ni kwa ajili ya bibi harusi kupokea kwa furaha. I just want to speak this morning. Kwa nataka kunena asubuhi ya leo on the day of the son of man. Katika kuhusu siku ya mwana wa Adam. And uh, I was uh, encouraged. Nami nilitiwa moyo when uh, our precious uh, pastor Bukasa on on Friday. Uh, wakati ndugu wetu wa thamani Pastor Bukasa Juma uh, started preaching on the seven thunders. Alipoanza kuhubiri kuhusu ngurumo saba. Uh, because again is one of those subjects. Kwa sababu unajua tena kwa uhusu hayo masomo yote. Uh, that people tremble a bit when it's mentioned. Watu wanatetemeka kidogo wakati yanapotajwa. But there's no need. Na hakuahitaji uh, hakuna it's, haja. It's part of the bride's inheritance. Ni sehemu ya urithi wa bibi harusi. Because the mystery of God has been finished. Kwa sababu siri ya Mungu imemalizika. All of these things belong to us. Mambo haya yote ni ya kwetu. And uh, so you know that's why uh, and and when he read John chapter 12. Na unajua aliposoma Yohana 12. I was very happy. Nilifurahi sana. And I knew that uh, we are on the right track. <laughs> Nikajua oh sasa tuko katika njia sahihi. Because when you read Revelation chapter 10 verse 4. Unaposoma ufunuo sura ya 10 mstari wa 4. The Bible says John was for bidden to write Biblia nasema Yohana alizuiwa kuandika what the seven thunders uttered kile ambacho ngurumo saba ilitoa sauti au ilinena so there is something that was said kuna jambo fulani lilinenwa it was not just a thunder hii haikuwa tu ngurumo something was said kitu fulani kilitajwa that's what the bible says hicho ndio biblia inatosema he was forbidden not to write a noise Haku, hakuzuiwa kuandika kelele no but what was said lakini kile kilichosemwa and what was said na kile kilichosemwa the prophet of god tells us nabii anatuambia was the revelation of the seven seals ulikuwa ni ufunuo wa mihuri saba because when you read in the bible in revelation chapter 6 and 7 and 8 unaposoma katika biblia ufunuo sura ya 6 7 na 8 you read about the symbols unasoma kuhusu mifano and when it opened the, se- the first seal it's a-, a symbol alipofungua mhuri wa kwanza ulikuwa na mfano pale it just says a white horse rider alisema tu mpanda farasi mweupe i didn't tell you anything haikuambi chochote it took a prophet in this age lakini ilimlazimu nabii katika wakati huu tell us what that white horse rider means kutuambia kile mpanda farasi alimaanisha but what john was forbidden to write lakini kile yohana alizuiwa kuandika exactly what the revelation of that white horse rider was ilikuwa tu ni ule ufunuo wa hicho kitu kilichohusu not for his day kwa sababu haikuwa kwa ajili ya siku yake that's why the bible then says in revelation 10:7 ndipo biblia inasema katika ufunuo sura ya 17 the seventh angel messenger comes wakati mjumbe wa wa saba atakapokuja all the mystery of god should be finished siri zote za mungu zitamalizika that's what we have received in the day hicho ndicho tumepokea katika siku hizi opening of the word kufunuliwa kwa neno and when you when you look at everything relating to this message na unapotazama kila kitu ambacho kinahusu ujumbe huu it points to the same thing in kinaelekeza kwenye jambo lile lile it's the revelation of jesus christ ni ufunuo wa yesu kristo and when jesus christ is revealed na wakati yesu kristo amefunuliwa when you look into the revelation of jesus christ unapotazama kwenye ufunuo wa yesu kristo you must see yourself lazima ujione mwenyewe the revelation of jesus christ kwa sababu ufunuo wa yesu kristo is the revelation of the bride of jesus ni ufunuo wa bibi harusi wa yesu Christo. The bride of Christ, Bibi harusi wa Kristo, is the mystery of Christ 
revealed. Ni siri ya Kristo iliyofunuliwa. Much as Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Kama tu vile Kristo ni siri ya Mungu iliyofunuliwa. The bride is the mystery of Christ revealed. Na bibi harusi ni siri ya Kristo iliyofunuliwa. Because all that was in God. Kwa sababu kile chote kilichokuwa ndani ya Mungu. Into the Lord Jesus. Kile ni mimi ndani ya Yesu Bwana Yesu Kristo. All that was in the Lord Jesus. Na kile chote kilichokuwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo. He poured into the bride. Alikimimina ndani ya bibi harusi. So the whole thing is God. Kwa jambo lote ni Mungu. Becoming material. Akifanyika ki akifanyika dhahiri. And that's why even yesterday when Pastor Chris spoke about the wheat age. Wa ndio maana jana wakati ndugu Pastor Chris alipozungumza kuhusu wakati wa ngano. The bride age. Wakati wa bibi harusi. This is the age that we are living in. Huu ni wakati ambao tunaishi. No the Bible says that the prophet of God teaches us when we read in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. Wakati Biblia nasema na nabii anatufundisha kwamba tunaposoma ufunuo sura ya 4 mstari wa kwanza John is summoned to come up hither Ndipo Yohana anaitwa kupanda huku juu The prophet of God says Nabii wa Mungu anasema John has just come out of the seven churches Ndipo anasema Yohana ametoka tu nje ya nyakati saba za kanisa And and that's why you know when you read uh, also the, the pastor read John chapter 12 again yesterday ah, verse 24 Ndipo maana ukisoma tena ile Yohana 12 um, mstari wa 24 uh, which also the Bible speaks about the seed that went into the ground Na ampo Biblia inanena kuhusu mbegu iliyoanguka ardhini is the same one that comes out that comes into maturity Ni ile ile ambayo inakuja kwenye ukomavu and we are that seed in Na sisi ndio ile mbegu katika wakati huu Let's open our Bibles Hebu tufungue Biblia zetu in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 Katika kitabu cha kumbukumbu la Torati sura 18 Uh, verse 15 to verse 19 sura 18 mstari wa 15 mpaka to verse 19 mpaka 19 and we'll also read chapter 30 verse 11 to 14 utasoma pia sura ya 30 mstari wa 11 mpaka 13 and we we'll also go read Luke chapter 17 utasoma pia Luka 17 The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 the Bible teaches us The Lord thy God will raise unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me unto him ye shall hearken Well let me read the whole thing as the brother is finding it According to all that thou did desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly saying let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not and the Lord said unto thee they have well spoken that which they have spoken I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my works my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name I will require it of him bwana mtasema katika jina la bwana Yesu Kristo Bwana Mungu wako atakuondokeshea nabii miongoni mwa ndugu zako kama nilivyo mimi msikilizeni yeye kama vile ulivyotaka ku kwa Bwana Mungu wako huko Horeb siku ya kusanyiko ukisema nisisikie tena sauti ya Bwana Mungu wangu wala nisiwone tena moto huu mkubwa nisije nikafa Bwana akaniambia wametenda vema kusema walivyosema mimi nitaondokeshea nabii miongoni mwa ndugu zao mfano wako wewe nami nitatia maneno yangu kinywani mwake naye atawaambia yote nitakayowaamuru hata itakuwa mtu atakayesikiliza maneno yangu atakayosema kwa yule kwa jina langu nitalitaka kwake amen 
So there's something that the, the Bible says here uh, uh, which is really wonderful. Kuna jambo fulani ambalo Biblia inasema hapa ambalo ni cha ajabu sana. God says, Mungu anasema, I will raise a prophet like unto you Moses. Kwamba nitamuinua nabii kama wewe Musa from among your brethren. Kutoka kati ya ndugu zako. And he says something that it's according to what the children of Israel said. Na anasema jambo fulani ambalo ni kulingana na vile ambavyo wana wa Israeli walisema. When they said we will not hear directly from you again. Wakasema hatutataka kusikia moja kwa moja kutoka kwako tena. And we, want, we don't want to see the fire anymore. Wasema hatutaki kuona moto tena unless we die. So this is what the children of Israel said in the book of Exodus chapter 20. Hiki ndicho wana wa Israeli walichosema katika kitabu cha kutoka sura 20. When you start from Exodus chapter 19, unapoanza kutoka sura 19. You know God wanting to 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 vindicate his prophet Moses. Mungu alitaka kumthibitisha nabii wake Musa. He says Go tell the children of Israel. Sema nenda uambie wana wa Israel that they must prepare themselves. Kwamba lazima wajiandae wenyewe. I am going to come down onto the mountain. Nitashuka chini juu ya mlima. They must prepare themselves and on the third day. Well, lazima wajiandae wenyewe na katika siku ya tatu I will come or down onto the mountain. Nami nitakuja chini juu ya mlima. And when God came down onto the mountain. Na wakati Mungu aliposhuka juu ya mlima. There was thunder and lightning on the mountain. Kulikuwa na ngurumo na radi juu ya mlima. The children of Israel said. Wana wa Israeli wakasema. This is not how we want to see God again. Hivi sivyo tunavyotaka kumuona Mungu tena. We will hear you Moses. Tutakuwa tukikusikia wewe Musa. God must speak through you. Mungu lazima anene kupitia wewe. And that has been the pattern of God. Na huo umekuwa mtaratibu wa Mungu. And God uses a man to speak to a man. Na ndipo Mungu anatumia mtu kunena na mtu. And that's why he says here. Na ndio sababu anasema hapa. I will raise a prophet like you. Nami nitainua nabii kama ninyi. And we know the prophet has taught us. Na tunajua nabii ametuambia that the son of man means prophet. Kwamba mwana wa Adamu anamaanisha nabii. So uh, in 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 Deuteronomy chapter 20 the same scripture chapter 30 sorry uh, verse 11 ndipo 14 sura ya 30 mstari wa 11 kumbukumbu la Torati there is something that the bible says here which really really encourages me Kuna jambo fulani Biblia inasema ambalo hasa sana linanitia moyo and may it encourage all of us Hebu ulitutie moyo sote It says Inasema for this commandment which I command thee this day kwa maana maagizo haya ninayokuagiza leo it is not hidden from thee haya wala si hayajafichwa kutoka kwako nida is it far off hata hivyo hayako si mba, hayako mbali it is not in heaven hayako si mbinguni that thou should say who shall go for us to heaven and bring it unto us ha, that we may hear it and do it hata useme ni nani atakayetupandia mbinguni akatuletee aje atuambie tusikie neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it wala si ngambo ya pili ya bahari hata useme ni nani atakayetuvukia bahari akatuletee aje atuambie tusikie tupate kuyafanya but the word is very near unto you in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it lakini neno likaribu nawe sana likatika kinywa chako cha cha moyo wako na moyo wako upate kulifanya oh the revelation is no longer in heaven oh ufunuo hauko tena mbinguni the revelation is not overseas na ndipo ufunuo haupo kule ngambo nchi za ngambo it is very near unto you na bwana anasema neno liko karibu sana na wewe god is in you na neno liko ndani yako god doesn't want something that is far and complicated mungu hataki jambo fulani ambalo liko mbali na ngumu god has brought it near unto you na mungu ameleta karibu na wewe that is what this message has come to do hicho ndicho ambacho ujumbe huu umekuja kufanya to open the word to each and every one kufungua neno kwa kila
kila mmoja wetu that we must expect it from heaven no no it's here usili usilitegemee kutoka mbinguni hapana liko hapa that's why before the prophet preached the seals ndio maana kabla nabii ajahubiri mihuri he preaches god in simplicity alihubiri mungu katika urahisi he gives you he he he, he makes it easy for you anaifanya iwe rahisi kwako he says it's god revealed in simplicity ni mungu akijifungua katika urahisi he is showing you that what i am about to preach kwamba kile ambacho ninakaribia kuhubiri don't think it's difficult usiwazie kwamba ni kigumu it's god in simplicity ni mungu katika urahisi and then he comes and he preaches na ndipo anaanza ku, anakuja na kuhubiri miwili saba god giving us courage ni mungu akitupatia sisi ujasiri the word is not in heaven kwamba neno aliko mbinguni it's here iko hapa luke chapter 17 luka 17 from verse 22 to 30. Um, you know, we've been standing for a while so we'll sit just now. I'll just read it quickly and then the brother will read it also. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the son of man and you shall not see it. They shall say unto you, see here or see there, go not after them, no follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven so shall also the son of man be in his day but this but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation and as it was in the days of noah so shall it be also in the days of the son of man They did eat, they drank, they mar- married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man is revealed. Akawaambia wanafunzi siku zitakuja mtakapotamani kuona siku moja katika siku ya zake mwana wa Adam msiione tena watawaambia tazama kule tazama huku msiondoke mahali mlipo wala msiwafuate kwa kuwa kama vile umeme umulikavyo toka upande huu chini ya, ya mbingu hata upande huu chini ya mbingu ndivyo atakavyokuwa mwana wa Adam katika siku yake lakini kwanza hana budi kupata mateso mengi na kukataliwa na kizazi hiki na kama ilivyokuwa katika siku za Nuhu ndivyo itakavyokuwa katika siku zake mwana wa Adam walikuwa kila na kunywa walikuwa kioa na kuolewa hata siku ile Nuhu alivyoingia katika safina garika ikashuka ikawaangamiza wote kadhalika kama ilivyokuwa katika siku za Lutu walikuwa kila na kunywa walikuwa kinunua na kuuza wakipanda na kujenga lakini siku ile Lutu alivyotoka Sodoma kulinyesha moto na kibiriti kutoka mbinguni vikawangamiza wote hivyo ndivyo atakavyokuwa siku ile atakavyofunuliwa mwana wa Adam Amen may the Lord bless the reading of his word Amen Mungu abariki kusoma kwa neno lake As mentioned we just want to share a thought on this the day of the son of man Ah kama tulivyotaja tunataka kushiriki wazo kuhusu siku ya mwana wa Adam um, and um, We believe that God has sent us a message. Tunaamini kwamba Mungu ametutuma ametumia sisi ujumbe. And a, a message has to say something to us. Na ujumbe unapaswa kutuambia sisi kitu fulani. We must believe we must receive what the message says to us. Tunapaswa kutupokea kile ujumbe unatuambia sisi. We must be like Mary who said. Tunapaswa kuwa kama Maria aliyesema. Be it unto me according to your word. Iwe kwangu kama kulingana na neno lako and the bible says when she said that na biblia nasema aliyosema hivyo the prophet teaches us when she said that na biblia natufundisha aliposema hivyo that word became blood in her womb nasema lile neno likafanyika damu katika tumbo la uzazi meaning that the word became flesh ikimaanisha kwamba neno lilifanyika mwili and that's the same thing with us today na hilo ndio jambo lile lile leo na sisi encouraged by uh, the prophet of god kwamba tunatiwa moyo na nabii wa mungu that as it was The word made flesh in our groom. Kwamba kama ilivyokuwa neno lilifanyika mwili kwa bwana harusi wetu. It must be the word made flesh 
in the bride inapaswa iwe neno likifanyika mwili katika bibi harusi as it was kama ilivyokuwa so it has to be ndivyo inapaswa kuwa it's no longer so shall it be hai tena ndivyo itakavyokuwa so it is ni sasa tunasema hivi ndivyo ilivyo it was a prophecy ilikuwa ni unabi now it has been fulfilled sasa imetimia so the prophet of god shows us that kwa nabii wa mungu anatuonyesha kwamba the uh, god always works in a particular way kwamba mungu mara zote anafanya katika njia fulani he first draws the attention of the people kwa mara ya kwanza anaanza kuvuta usikivu wa watu and then he brings the word na ndipo analeta neno we saw exactly what he did with moses tunaona vile kila chofanya na musa sasa he said you know you will show them a sign Unajua alionyesha ile ishara put your hand under your, your, your bosom weka kifu, weka mkono wako kifuani it will be like leprosy utakuwa kama una ukoma put it back again it will be clean ishe na ukitapona throw your rod it becomes a snake tupa fimbo yako inakuwa nyoka pick it up it becomes a rod again toa tena inakuwa fimbo tena but he said and the, the bible says if they don't believe the voice of the first sign na biblia nasema kama wasipoamini sauti ya ishara ya kwanza they will believe the voice of the second sign wataamini sauti ya ishara ya pili so it was not so much for moses to show them the signs haikuwa sana kwa musa kuwaonyesha zile ishara they had to receive the voice of the sign waliposha kupokea sauti ya ile ishara and the voice of the sign na ile sauti ya ile ishara was the fulfillment of what god had promised ilikuwa ni kutimizwa kwa kile mungu alichokuwa ameagidi moses was coming to say musa alikuwa anakuja kusema god said that the seed of abraham will go and saw jan in a strange land for 400 years kwamba uzao wa ibrahimu utakwenda na ku na kuwa mgeni kwa miaka 400 katika nchi ya ugeni and he will come and take them out with a mighty hand naye atakuja na kuwatoa kwa mkono wenye nguvu and now moses was saying i am that mighty hand of god sasa musa alikuwa akisema mimi ndiye ule mkono wa nguvu wa mungu who is coming to take you out of bondage ambao nimekuja kuwatoa utumwani to take you to the promised land kuwapeleka kwenye nchi ya ahadi so that was the message that moses gave huo ndio ulikuwa ujumbe ambao musa alitoa and is the same thing with us today na ndio jambo lile lile na sisi leo the, the, the revelation chapter 10 verse 7 ufunuo sura ya 10 mstari wa 7 is when the prophet begins to sound the trumpet ni wakati ambapo na nabi anaanza kupiga baragumu it is when the prophet begins to sound his message ni wakati ambapo nabi anaanza ku piga ujumbe wake and then all the mysteries of god are revealed na ndipo siri zote za mungu zinafunuliwa and the prophet says it's not in the time of the preparation nabii anasema si wakati wa maandalizi it's not in the first pool and the second pool si wakati wa mvuto wa kwanza mvuto wa pili it's in the third pool ni katika mvuto wa tatu the opening of the way kufunuliwa kwa neno the revealing of the mysteries kufunuli kufunuliwa kwa yale mafumbo and it's it's it's, it's this seventh end angel messenger nani huyu mjumbe wa saba who receives the the, the the book the open book was in the hand of the mighty angel aliyepokea kile ki, kitabu kichofunuliwa kichokuwa katika malaika wa mwenye nguvu revelation chapter 10 verse 1 it's christ ofunuo kumi msali wa kwanza ni kristo with an open book akiwa na kitabu kilichowazi same book that was sealed with seven seals in revelation chapter 5 kitabu kile kile kilichokuwa kimefungwa kwa mihuri saba katika ufunuo sura ya 5 is now an open book sasa ni kitabu kilichowazi and that angel christ comes down na yule malaika kristo anashuka chini because he was the lamb dying eh, 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 which is what the bible says in revelation chapter 5 na maana alikuwa ni mwana kondoo aliyekuwa kifa kama biblia inavyosema katika ufunuo sura ya 5 talks about the lamb and the lion ikitena kuhusu mwana kondoo na simba as a lamb he is a mediator kama mwana kondoo yeye ni mpatanishi he is an intercessor yeye ni mwombezi but when he comes as a lion to claim what he has paid for lakini anapokuja kama simba kudai kile alicholipia no longer an intercessor si mwombezi tena he is a lion coming to claim what he has paid yeye ni simba akija kudai kile alichokuwa he comes to with an open book ndipo anak 
kuja na kitabu kilicho wazi and the seals have been broken na, vi, na mihuri imefunjwa and the prophet says who are the seals open for anasema nani ambaye kwa ajili yake mihuri imefunguliwa open for himself haijajifungulia mihuri mwenyewe not even open for the seventh angel messenger hakufunua kwa ajili ya mjumbe wa saba he says he takes the book Sema alichukua kitabu he gives it to the seventh angel messenger anampatia mjumbe wakati wa saba had to reveal it to the bride ili yeye akifunua kwa bibi harusi the open book is for us nipo kitabu kicho wazi ni cha kwetu and, and john typing the bride na yohana akiwa mfano wa bibi harusi is instructed to eat the book ameagizwa uh, kula kitabu so that she may he, she may become the book ili kwamba yeye afanyike hicho kitabu when she has taken the book wakati anapochukua hicho kitabu and because the prophet of god says na kwa sababu nabii bwana anasema he says this alone hiki pekee the who, mysteries of god ah uh, si, huyu pekee siri zote za mungu is the ministry of the seventh angel ni huduma ya mjumbe wa saba the ministry of the seventh angel huduma ya mjumbe wa saba the prophet says this alone huyu pekee selema huyu pekee only yeye pekee mysteries of god siri za mungu is the ministry of the seventh angel ni huduma ya mjumbe wa saba to reveal the mystery yeye ndiye anayefunua siri za mungu everything else kila kitu kingine is in preparation for that kipo kwa ajili ya maandalizi ya jambo hilo you know when the prophet says this alone unajua nabii anaposema huyu pekee he saying don't look anywhere else anasema usitazame mahali pengine popote that's why in that dream of brother junior jackson ndio maana katika ile ndoto ya ndugu junior jackson they were instructed to look inside waliagizwa kutazama kule ndani there was nothing written hakukopo chochote kilichoandikwa nothing was written on that white stone kuna chochote kilichokuwa kimeandikwa katika jeo jeupe there was something written on the white stone kulikuwa na jambo fulani imeandikwa katika jeo jeupe when he went west na nabii alipoenda kule magharibi he had to come back with the mystery of what that white stone means alipaswa kurudi na ile siri ya kile jeo jeupe ilimaanisha he instructed him to look inside that stone akawelekeza waangalie ndani ya lile jiwe and you can only see what is written una unaweza kuona kile kilichoandikwa if you have representation kama tu una ule uwakilisho because the prophet of god says kwa sababu nabii wa mungu anasema when he talks about our names in the book anapenda kuhusu majina yetu kwenye kitabu the name is not written brother tepisho makofani Jina aliandiki ndugu sepisho flani flani. No, he says it's God sends a mystery. Ni Mungu akituma siri. And you receive the revelation of Na wewe unapokea huo ufunuo wa siri. And you see your name in the book. Na ndipo unaona jina lako kwenye kitabu. That's what the name in the book means. Hicho ndicho jina kwenye kitabu inamaanisha. It's not Omen Neville. Sio Omen Neville. No, it's the mystery that's sent to you. Ni na siri iliyotumwa kwako. And by that representation. Na kwa huo uwakili so that theophany that you bypassed ile theophany ambayo uliivuka that's why he says you have heard from your theophany ndio maana anasema wewe umesikia kutoka katika theophany yako only that theophany ni theophany hiyo pekee can receive this mystery ambayo inaweza kupokea hii siri but you must have had a representation kwamba lazima uwe na ule uwakilisho and that's why the prophet of god also says ndio maana nabii wa mungu pia anasema he says All the mysteries of God. Siri zote za Mungu will be made known in that Elijah. Zitafahamishwa kwa huyo Elia. Elijah of our day. Elia wa siku yetu is to contain atabeba and reveal to us na kutufunulia sisi all the mysteries of God. Siri zote za Mungu. And we must know na sisi tunapaswa kujua no, Our God is a God of dispensation. Kwamba Mungu wetu ni Mungu wa nyakati. He 
God doesn't work uh, with no order. Mungu afanye kazi bila utaratibu. God works orderly. Mungu anafanya kazi kwa utaratibu. And so you must know the dispensation that you are living in. Na unapaswa ujue ule wakati unaoishi. For you to be able to know him in your day ili kwamba wewe uweze kumjua yeye katika siku yako if you don't know the dispensation that you are living in kama hujui wakati unaoishi if you don't know how he is to reveal himself in that dispensation kama hujui jinsi gani anajifunua mwenyewe katika huo wakati you will miss him utamkosa because the children of israel kwa sababu wana wa israel when jesus was here on earth wakati yesu alipokuwa hapa duniani and he was the fullness of the godhead bodily naye alikuwa utimilifu wa Mungu kwa jinsi ya mwili they were still going into the temple walikuwa bado wakienda kule kaluni they still thought he is behind the veil walikuwa nadhani kwamba bado yuko nyuma ya pazia but that one who was behind the veil lakini yule aliyekuwa nyuma ya pazia he the bible says biblia inasema the lord whom you seek yule bwana mnayemtafuta behold he comes to his temple tazama yuaje katika And now it was a human temple. Sasa ilikuwa hekalu la bili wa binadamu. It was no longer the temple of Solomon. Haikuwa tena hekalu ya Sulemani. It was a human temple. Ilikuwa ni hekalu la mwanadamu. The dispensation had changed. Kile wakati ulikuwa umebadilika sasa. But Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. Says to them. Ye akawaambia, search the scriptures. Tumbuzeni au tafutani maandiko. In them you think you have eternal life. Kwa sababu ndani yake mnadhani mna uzima wa milele. They are they that testify of me. Hayo maandiko ndio hasa yananishuhudia mimi ni nani. The scriptures tell you who I am. Maandiko yanawaambia mimi ni nani. Because the Bible says. Kwa sababu Biblia inasema, The Lord your God. Mungu Mungu wenu. Shall send you a prophet. Atapelekeni nabii. From among you. Kutoka katikati yenu. You must hearken unto him. Lazima umsikilize yeye. I am the fulfillment of Deuteronomy 18:15. Sasa mimi ni utimilisho wa kumbukumbu la Torati. 18 as much as John the Baptist kama tu vile Yohana mbatizaji he was the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 40 alipokuwa alikuwa ni kutimizwa kwa Isaya sura 40 so Jesus Christ came here ndipo Yesu Kristo alipokuja hapa as the fulfillment of scripture kama kutimizwa kwa maandiko and now when you read Matthew chapter 15 unaposoma Mathayo sura ya 15 uh, you read about the Canaanite woman or the Syrophoenician woman unasoma kuhusu yule mwanamke msirofonike and we know the bible says na unajua biblia inasema she said to him yeye alimwambia ye, thou son of david wewe mwana wa daudi mercy on me uwe mwenye rehema kwangu ni the bible teaches us na biblia inatufundisha that he never even looked at her kwamba hata hakumtazama why kwa nini because kwa sababu to her kwake yeye he was mwaki. not the son of david hakuwa mwana wa daudi because she was a gentile kwa sababu yeye alikuwa wa mataifa so she was addressing him wrong alikuwa akimuita vibaya and that's why he did not give her attention ndio sababu yeye hakumgeukia but when she said lord lakini aliposema bwana then she, he gave her attention ndipo akamgeukia so it is very very important kwa ni muhimu sana sana that we know who he is today kama tumjua yeye ni nani leo aujourd'hui today leo we must know him today lazima tumjue yeye leo because you know although you can read it in the bible unajua ingawa unaweza kusoma kwenye biblia that moses took his rod kwamba Musa alitoa fimbo yake and pointed to the red sea and the red sea opened akanyoshea bahari ya shamu na bahari ya shamu ikafunguka and if you took the people today kama nyinyi watu pia leo to the red sea with a rod nkaenda kule bahari ya shamu na fimbo the red sea won't open na ndipo ile bahari ya shamu haitafunguka that's not how he is to be revealed today kwa sababu sivyo ambavyo atafunuliwa leo so for you to know him 
Kwa ili wewe umjue you must know what dispensation you are living in. Lazima ujue wakati gani unaishi. And today na leo you must know how he is to be revealed. Lazima ujue jinsi gani yeye anafunuliwa. Oh and I taught by the prophet. Na ndio tunaambiwa na nabii that today kwamba leo he is to be revealed as the son of man. Yeye atafunuliwa kama mwana wa Adam. That's his designation today hicho ndicho atakachokuwa leo that's how we see and know him today hivyo ndio tunavyomuona na kumtambua leo we are in that day today in that tu, age tupo katika hiyo wakati leo and you know we are not talking about an eighth age or eighth messenger no no that's not what we are talking unajua nani kuhusu wakati wa nane au mjumbe wa nane hapana if you look at the scene in genesis chapter 18 kama ukitazama ile picha pale katika mwanzo 18 there were three groups of people kulikuwa hapo na makundi matatu ya watu sodomites wa sodoma lot wa lutu abraham na ibrahim so now these people ha watu were in the same area walikuwa katika eneo moja because God when he was speaking to Abraham. Kwa sababu Mungu alipokuwa akinena na Ibrahim. They were looking towards Sodom. Walikuwa wakitazama Sodoma. They could see Sodom and Gomorrah. Walikuwa wanaweza kuiona Sodoma na Gomorrah. It was not too far. Haikuwa mbali sana. They were in the same area. Walikuwa katika eneo moja. But these three people. Lakini hawa watu watatu. Were in very different dispensations. Walikuwa katika vipindi vitofauti kabisa. So the bride of Christ. Ko Yarusi wa Kristo although physically ingawa kimwili we are in the seventh church age tuko katika wakati wa saba spiritually kiroho we are in the day of the son of man tuko katika siku ya mwana wa adam because kwa sababu that's why the bible says time shall be no more ndio sababu biblia nasema wakati hautakuwa tena the opening of the seven seals kufunuliwa kwa mihuri saba takes place after time is no more kunafanyika baada ya wakati kuisha because the eighth day takes you back to eternity again kwa sababu siku ya nane inakurudisha tena umileleni in a different dispensation sasa uko katika kipindi tofauti cha wakati and that elohim na huyo elohim that one who was god made flesh yule aliyekuwa mungu aliyefanyika mwili huyo it was god himself ambaye alikuwa mungu mwenyewe he came down into a body of flesh alikuja alishuka chini katika mwili wa nyama he was so human alikuwa wa Mwanadam kabisa he even had dust on his feet alikuwa hata na vumbi kwenye miguu yake he even ate with abraham alikula na hata alikula na ibrahim but it was god lakini ilikuwa ni mungu elohim elohim he had come down into a body of flesh alikuwa ameshuka chini katika mwili wa nyama and what he had come to do na kile alichokuwa amekuja kufanya on the one side was the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah upande mmoja ulikuwa ni uharibifu wa Sodoma na Gomorrah on the other side was the changing of the body of Abraham and Sarah na upande mwingine ulikuwa ni kubadilishwa kwa mwili kwa Ibrahim na Sarah so to the Laodicean church age kwenye kwenye upande wa kanisa wakati wa kanisa la Odikia this message brings judgment hujumbe unapeleka hukumu but to the bride of christ lakini kwenye kwa kwa biarusi wa kristo this is the mystery for a body change hizi ni siri au fumbo kwa ajili ya kubadilishwa kwa mwili brother bernard let's uh, 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 flesh the, the 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 quotations ah ndugu hebu weka zile nukuu um, uh, in the spoken word the seed is not air with a shark katika neno la neno mbegu haitarithi pamoja na kapi no, I was also encouraged by pastor bukasa tuli nilitoa moyo na ndugu bukasa you know, when you go through the prophet what the prophet says unapopita kupitia nabii pale nabii alichosema then you are safe ndipo uko salama because then it's not me saying this saying that sababu sio mimi nikisema hiki nikisema kile is the prophet saying ni nabii akisema so if there is uh, anybody to be excommunicated kama kuna mtu yeyote akutolewa nje aku it's not me sio mimi it's the prophet nabii so 
I am going to maybe read a lot of quotations. Labda nitakwenda kusoma nukuu nyingi, but it's uh, for my own safety. Lakini kwa ajili ya usalama wangu binafsi. So that we live here with what the prophet has said. Ili kwamba tuondoke hapa na kile nabii amesema. So the prophet of God says in the seed is not air with a shark. Kwa nabii anasema katika ujumbe ule mbegu alitalithi pamoja na shaka. He says na he kapu. that this great mystery of God made known. Kwamba yeye ambaye huu siri kuu ya Mungu itafahamika understand ikueleweka how that god was in christ kwamba jinsi gani mungu alikuwa ndani ya kristo reconciling the world to himself akipatanisha ulimwengu kwa nafsi yake mwenyewe how that he and the father are one jinsi jinsi vile ambavyo yeye na baba ni mmoja how that the mysteries of the fulfilling of god jinsi gani zile siri za kutimizwa kwa mungu taking and bringing himself akichukua na kujileta mwenyewe manifested in the age of human beings ilivyodhihirishwa katika wakati wa wanadamu in the strain of human beings katika kondo wa wanadamu in the company of human beings katika kundi pamoja na wanadamu to make his word manifested kufanya neno lake lidhihirike In the day of the eastern rising of the Katika sun Katika siku ya kuchomoza kwa jua kuu ya mashariki do the same thing as the sun sets in the west Kwa jambo lile lile wakati jua likizama magharibi to make himself manifested in a bride church Kujifanya mwenyewe akijidhihisha mwenyewe katika kanisa la bibi harusi The word made manifest neno likifanyika likidhihirishwa what is he doing anafanya nini and he says there are those to whom this great mystery has been made known wapo wale ambao siri hii kuu inafahamishwa there are those who understand this mystery Ku, ni wale ambao wanaelewa hii siri that god has come to manifest himself in human flesh kama mungu amekuja kujidhihirisha mwenyewe katika mwili wa kibinadamu in the cause in the eastern rising of the sun katika kule kuchomoza kwa jua ya mashariki that's what he did kila ndicho alichokifanya therefore in the west he must do the same ndipo magharibi anapaswa kufanya jambo lile lile because that's exactly what the bible says kwa sababu hasa hicho ndicho biblia inachosema where we read in luke chapter 17 tuliposoma katika luka 17 as the lightning shines in one part of the heavens and the same in the other part sema kama nuru inavyoangaza upande mmoja wa mbingu na vile vile inavyoangaza upande mwingine wa nchi But in fact in Matthew 24 27 he puts it even nicely it says katika Mathayo 24 27 24 saba anaiweka wazi wazi zaidi the, the bible is the same scripture uh, biblia katika andiko lile lile it says for as the lightning cometh out of the east kama uh, 27 verse 27 yes. Kwa maana kama vile umeme uonekana utokavyo mashariki and shineth even unto the west na unavyo una, una, unaonekana hata magharibi so shall also the coming of the son of man hivyo ndivyo kutakavyokuwa kuja kwake mwana wa Adam so, the lord jesus christ bwana yesu kristo that's why deuteronomy 30 says ndio maana kumkumbu na torati 30 inasema The word is not far. Neno aliko mbali. It's very near. Lipo karibu. So Jesus Christ. Kwa Yesu Kristo gave us a a pattern. Alitupatia sisi kielelezo. He says to us. Akatuambia the way that the son of man came the first time. Jinsi ambavyo mwana wa Adamu alivyokuja mara ya kwanza is the way that the son of man will come the second time. Ndivyo vile vile atakavyokuja mwana wa Adamu mara ya pili. The same lightning in the east umeme au nuru ile ile kule mashariki must be the same one in the west. Lazima iwe ile ile huku magharibi. Um, and in the next quotation ndipo katika nuku inaofuata as we are just set in the background to, to see where we are kama tunavyoweka msingi kuona pale tulipo so uh, the same spoken word paragraph 92 he says ndipo paragraph ya 92 anasema luther 
went to husk with the first word. Ah, Luther alikwenda kuwa kishada kwenye lile neno la kwanza. The just shall live by faith. Ah, mwenye haki ataishi kwa imani. And Wesley had the two words sanctification, the second definite work of grace. Yo, na Wesley alikuwa na maneno mawili, utakaso, kazi ya pili ya neema. He says but when Pentecost had the third word the restoration of the gifts. Na ndipo Pentecost ilikuwa na neno la tatu kurejeshwa kwa vipawa. But he says the entire seed has to come forth. Lakini uh, neno lo, uh, mbegu yote inaposhwa kuja. In the other words they denominated kwa, kwa mane, maneno mengine walifanyika dhehebu but there has to come something that cannot be denominated lakini inapaswa kuja jambo fulani ambalo haliwezi kufanyika dhehebu it's the entirety of the life that's in there the same quotation oh okay yeah uh, it has to produce itself again on a bride ni ujumla wote wa uzima pale unapaswa ujizae mwenyewe kuwa bibi harusi and he says there cannot be any more church ages after this na ndipo hapawezi kuwa na wakati mwingine wa kanisa baada ya huu we are at the end tupo wakati wa mwisho we are here tuko hapa we have arrived tumefika we have arrived where god wanted to arrive Tumefika pale ambapo Mungu alitaka tufike. Where God wanted to see himself reproduced in us again. Wakati Mungu alipotaka kujiona mwenyewe amezaliwa ndani yetu tena. Paragraph 101 the same spoken word. Ndipo paragraph ya 101 inasema katika neno la neno. He says notice in the Pentecostal age and the Lutheran age and the Wesleyan age and and uh, now the same thing through the pentecostal age sasa tazama katika wakati wa pentecoste wakati wa rutherani wakati wa wesley but at the opening of the seven seals lakini katika kufunuliwa kwa mihuri saba the revelation chapter 10 funua sura ya 10 the full word is to be born into manifestation again ndipo neno lote zima linapaswa lizaliwe katika kumadhirisho tena and vindicated by the spirit of god na kuthibitishwa na kwa roho wa mungu in the full strength as it was here when he was here on earth katika nguvu kamilifu kama alivyokuwa hapa alipokuwa duniani manifested the same way akidhirishwa katika namna ile ile doing the same thing he did when he was here on earth akifanya mambo yale yale aliyokuwa akifanya alipokuwa hapa duniani when god changes his mask wakati mungu anapobadilisha kinyago chake he doesn't lose his power hapotezi nguvu zake is the same god ni mungu yule yule so when he comes into you kwa anapokuja ndani yako it's the same god ni mungu yule yule and he says eh, as jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever na ndipo anasema yesu kristo yeye yule jana leo na milele Luke 17:30. Luke 17:30. In the day in the last days as it was in the days of Sodom. Hasa katika siku za mwisho kama ilivyo katika siku za Sodoma. When the son of man will be revealing himself again. Wakati mwana wa Adamu atakapokuwa akijifunua mwenyewe tena. It will be the same thing. Itakuwa jambo lile lile. We find that the world is in a Sodom condition. Tunakuta kwamba ulimwengu uko katika hali ya Sodoma. But it's what the same thing. Unajua nini ni jambo lile lile. The son of man is revealing himself again. Wakati mwana Adamu anapojifunua tena. And that's exactly what's happening today. Na hicho ndicho hasa kinachotendeka leo. Ephesians 103 he says Ndipo hapa katika paragraph ya 103 nasema The shark has given forth its strength. Ndipo kapi limetoa tena nguvu zake into the seed. Ndani ya mbegu. And it has gone out na imekwenda sasa it was a good shark ilikuwa ni kapi nzuri it has served its time limetumika wakati wake and now it is the word bride of the word groom hasa ni neno bibi harusi la neno bwana harusi bride must be the word bride ndipo uh, bibi harusi anapaswa awe bibi harusi neno paragraph 111 he says now is the seed time of bride 
time. Sasa ni wakati wa mbegu wa wakati wa bibi harusi. The sharks are dead. Makapi yamekufa. They've dried up. Yamekauka. It's the virgin word time. Ni wakati wa neno bikira. Not touch. Usiguse. It's a virgin. Ni bikira. A virgin word time. Biki wakati wa neno bikira. It's a virgin born word of God made manifest. Ni wakati wa wa bikira aliyezaliwa na Mungu akidhihirishwa. Jesus Christ the same yesterday today. Yesu Kristo yeye yule jana leo na milele. He says there will be no denominational men handling in the virgin birth of the bride. Hapatakuwa na kujali au kwa kimadhehebu kwa mtu wakati wa kuzaliwa kwa bikira bibi harusi the prophet of god is saying nabii wa mungu anasema that the the, the bride kwa bibi harusi is virgin born anazaliwa bikira the same way that the groom is virgin born vile vile ambavyo bwana harusi alizaliwa kibikira because the groom is virgin born kwa sababu bwana harusi amezaliwa kibikira so now when we look at how he came the first time tunapotazama vile alivyokuja katika wakati wa kwanza the prophet of god teaches us that nabii wa mungu anatufundisha kwamba when he came he was foreign by a man with the spirit of elijah alipokuja alitanguliwa na roho wa elia which was John the Baptist. Ambaye alikuwa ni Yohana mbatizaji. That's who introduced him. Yeye ndiye aliyemtambulisha. When he came the first time. Alipokuja wakati wa kwanza. Today when he comes as the bride. Na leo anapokuja kama bibi harusi, again there is a man with the spirit of Elijah. Nipo tena kuna mtu mwenye roho ya Elia to come and introduce the bride. Aje na kumtambulisha bibi harusi. That's why he says she is virgin born. Ndio maana anasema yeye amezaliwa kibikira. He is virgin born. Kwa sababu yeye mwanaume alikuwa amezaliwa kibikira. For the two to unite. Kwa ili wao wawili waweze kuungana, they must be the same. Lazima wawe mmoja. He cannot unite with a bride who doesn't look like him. Kwa sababu hawezi kuungana na bibi harusi ambaye hafanani naye. As much as as human beings ni kama tu sisi wanadam, when a man marries a wife wakati mwanaume anapomwoa mwanamke and he is a human being na yeye ni mwanaume ni, ni mtu mwanadam, he, he marries a wife who is a human being anaoa mke ambaye ni mwanadam. is the same thing with the lord jesus christ jambo lile lile na bwana yesu kristo if he is the word made flesh kama yeye ni neno ufanyika mwili he cannot marry a bride who is not the word made flesh hawezi kuoa bibi harusi ambaye si neno lilofanyika mwili if he is virgin born kama yeye amezaliwa na bikira she must be virgin born yeye ma- bibi harusi anapaswa kuwa alizaliwa na bikira if he is introduced by elijah kama yeye alitambulishwa alitamburi, na elia she must be introduced by elijah ipo yeye bibi harusi anapaswa kutambuliwa na elia otherwise the two cannot unite la sivyo wili hawezi kuungana then they cannot be a marriage ndipo kuwezi kuwa na ndoa they cannot be a union hapoezi kuwa na muunganiko if the two are not the same kama hawa wili si mmoja we are living in the days of the full revelation of the word of god tunaishi katika siku za ufunuo mkamilifu wa neno la mungu prophet of god calls it the full seven cost meal na bia nasema ni uh, mlo mkamilifu wa mgaji saba All the seven seals are open. Mir saba yote imefunguliwa. That's what the prophet says. He says, "Hicho ndicho anasema." Nabii anasema, "Seven seals are open." Nabii anasema, "Yote miuri saba yote imefunguliwa." All yote. There is nothing that still left out. Hakuna chochote ambacho kimebaki tena. Everything has been revealed. Kila kitu kimefunuliwa sisi. 
in the next quotation in modern events are made clear by prophecy. Ah, nuku nyingine matukio ya sasa yakidhihirishwa na unabii. Paragraph 56 says. Paragraph 56 anasema. We are not living in a Pentecostal age. Hatuishi katika wakati wa Pentecost. We are living in another age. Tunaishi katika wakati mwingine. We are not living in a Methodist age. Hatuishi katika wakati wa Methodist. We are living in another Hey, tunaishi katika wakati mwingine. We are living on up here to the bride age. Hey, tunaishi hapa juu kwenye wakati wa bibi harusi. The calling out of the church. Kuitwa nje kwa kanisa. Getting it together for the rapture. Kukusanywa pamoja kwa ajili ya unyakuo. That's the age that we are now living in. Huo ndio wakati ambao tunaishi sasa. Oh God is make, getting a bride ready for the rapture. Mungu ana pata bibi harusi tayari kwa ajili ya unyakuo and the bride has to be at the right rapturing station na bibi harusi anapaswa kuwa katika kituo sahihi cha kunyakuliwa the rapturing station today na kituo sahihi cha kunyakuliwa leo is the opening of the way kufunuliwa kwa neno the full revelation of the way kufunua mkamilifu wa neno this bride of christ huyu bibi harusi wa kristo has to be in the right dispensation anapaswa kuwa katika kipindi Sahi. She must be in the right condition. Ana paswa kuwa katika hali sahihi for her to receive the bride. Ili yeye aweze kuwa bibi harusi. The prophet of God says, Nabii wa Mungu anasema, When you look at the at the at the seven church at the pyramid. Unapotazama ile piramidi. He says the headstone, kila jiwa la kifuniko could not fit the third church age. Isingeweza kutoshea wakati wa tatu ya kanisa. It because it's too big here. Isingeweza kutoshea kwa sababu ni kubwa sana hapa chini. The head won't fit there by the third church. Ile kifuniko hakiwezi kufit kutosha pale chini kwenye wakati wa tatu. There was a honing in the prophet said. Lakini kulikuwa na kuchongokea kwa ndani na Biblia anasema. She's getting more and more ready. Anakuwa tayari zaidi na zaidi tayari. More and more prepared. Zaidi zaidi akiameandaliwa. And for the headstone ili kijiwa la kichwani fit the body litoshae mwili the prophet of god says there can be no gap na bila nasema hakuwezi kuwa na nafasi exactly the same kwa sababu atakuwa ametosha kikamilifu it must fit perfectly lazima itoshae kikamilifu that's what he had been doing hicho ndicho amekuwa kikifanya and that's why we are not living in a different age ndio maana tuishi wakati mwingine tofauti only be in this age itakuwa tu katika wakati huu mwingine God has prepared this bride Mungu ameandaa bibi harusi wake to be able to receive him ili kuweza kumpokea yeye and you know And, and, and that's why na ndio sababu the, the prophet of god teaches us na bila mungu anatufundisha that jesus christ kwamba yesu kristo had faith in what the word said about him alikuwa na imani kuhusu kile neno limenena kuhusu yeye because he says uh, uh, you know when you when you when you read where that where read john chapter 6 everyone is kusoma katika johana sura 6 He shows that he is the fulfillment of scripture. Yeye anaonyesha yeye ni kutimizwa kwa maandiko. And it's the same thing with us. Na ni jambo lile lile na sisi. The prophet says you are to fulfill the word not for his day. Nabii anasema wewe unapaswa kutimiza neno si kwa ile siku. But the word for your day. Lakini neno kwa ajili ya siku yako There is the word vindicated for your day. Kuna neno lililothibitishwa kwa ajili ya siku yako. And, and that's the word that you must fulfill. Na hiyo ndio neno ambalo wewe unapaswa kutimiza. Right through all the scripture kupitia kote katika maandiko We see that Noah, Moses, John, Tunaona Nuhu, Musa, Yohana they all fulfill the word for their day. Walikuwa kitimiza neno kwa ajili ya siku yao. We are also called upon to fulfill the word for our day nasi tumeitwa tena kutimiza neno la wakati wetu and it's in, the, in this day na ni katika siku hii prophet of god calls it the keeping of the pentecostal message nabii anasema ni ku, kutiwa kilele kwa wakati wa kipentecost when christ himself wakati kristo mwenyewe is made a human being anapofanyika mwanadamu in his people 
ndani ya watu wake and he says it's just before the marriage ceremony na anasema tu ni kabla ya ya sherehe ya harusi and we'll come back uh, uh, to that uh, a bit later on tutalirejea hilo wakati baadaye kidogo yes. No, so now this message if we read in the, uh, the next quotation in question and answers at my brother Tuki Pike, one one wafata, uh, uh, question and answers uh, 116 number 2 uh, 116 ah uh, maswali na majibu semi kitabu cha pili paragraph ya 116 showing us again akituonyesha tena that this ministry kwamba hii huduma this dispensation hiki kipindi is to prepare us for a body change inapaswa kutuandaa kwa ajili ya kubadilishwa mwili Uh, 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 and maybe uh, yeah okay let's just read it it says the watch the works of it uh, kazi za, tazama kazi zake number 2 uh, are we in the same place yes uh, no not this one uh, sorry the uh, 1964 0823 64 23rd of august 68 1964 23rd of august question and answers that one evening yes yes uh, number 2 paragraph 116 he says then watch the works of it sasa ta- tazama zile kazi zake it among us hizo kazi zake kati yetu ndani proves oh, uh, it among us hi ziko miongoni mwetu proves the same jesus inathibitisha yesu yule yule that once lived in palestine ambe aliishi mara ya kwanza huko palestina the same spirit that was upon him roho ile ile iliyokuwa juu yake has come up through a body imekuja tena kupitia mwili until it's come back to the headship again mpaka imekuja tena kwenye kichwa mara nyingine that which is coming soon to claim the body hicho ambacho kinakuja hivi karibuni kudai mwili amen the head is coming to the body amina kichwa kinakuja juu ya mwili that will be the son of god hicho itakuwa ni mwana wa mungu the son of man mwana wa adam the son of david mwana wa daudi i am the rose of sharon the lily of the valley the morning star mimi niko uh, uara ua uandani nyiroro ya bondeni i am not he. asubuhi says i am not he one one mimi sio yeye i am his servant mimi ni mtumishi wake the spirit of fire, the pillar of fire is not him ah uh, ile nguzo ya moto si yeye it's the spirit form ni umbo la roho which was upon the son of man ambao lilikuwa juu ya mwana wa adam and has come now na imekuja tena anoint the sons of men kuwa pia mafuta wana wa adam to bring back a ministry kurejesha tena huduma just a Exactly like he said it will be vile vile asa alivyosema itakuwa in order for the head and the rest of the body to connect together ili kwamba kichwa na mwili wote uliobakia uunganishwe pamoja paragraph 120 says ndio paragraph ya 120 anasema now that stone down there sasa lile jiwe kule chini sorry that stone will not fit down there on that bottom foundation ndipo lile jiwe lisingeweza kutosha kule chini katika msingi wa chini neither will it fit in the second foundation or the third foundation hivyo hivyo haitatosha katika msingi wa pili au msingi wa tatu it will only fit at the top of the foundation itatoshia tu katika msingi wa juu when the entire building has become fitted to the stone wakati wanapofungamanisha hilo jengo lote linatoshia kwenye kile jiwe la kilele says and jesus cannot come na yesu hawezi kuja until the church ni mpaka kanisa the body of believers mwili wa amini and the ministry that he once left na ile huduma ambayo aliacha will have to be the same at, as it was then inapaswa kuwa ile ile kama ilivyokuwa kipindi kile that's why hebrews 11 says that they without us may not be made ndio maana wa Ibrania sura ya 11 anasema wao bila sisi hawawezi kukamilishwa we must have this ministry na anasema tunapaswa kuwa na hii huduma to raise up the lutheran and the wesley and all of them through the church age kwa fufua wa rutheri na wa wesley kupitia kote katika nyakati that they without us may not be made perfect kwamba wao bila sisi hawawezi kukamilishwa so the prophet is saying 
Kwa na Biblia nasema The resurrection of all the saints ufufuo wa takatifu wote is depending on us reaching that perfection. Ina tutegemea sisi tufikie huo ukamilifu. And you know when you read in Hebrews chapter 11. Unajua unaposoma wa Hebrews sura ya 11. You know the Bible talks about this the Old Testament saints and the great heroes and horns of our faith. Biblia inanena kuhusu watakatifu wakati wa mwisho wa mashujaa wakubwa wa imani. And when you read about them. Unaposoma kuhusu the Bible says of whom the world was not worthy. Na Biblia inasema watu ambao ulimwengu haukustahili kuwa nao that's how holy they were jinsi walivyokuwa watakatifu the world was not even worthy of their lives ah ulimwengu haukuwa unawastahili wao but the bible says lakini biblia inasema god has put away some better thing lakini mungu alitunza vitu fulani bora zaidi and the bible says that they kwamba wao without us bila sisi may not be made perfect. You can see the position that God has put the bride. Unaweza kuona ile nafasi ambayo Mungu amemweka bibi harusi. The bride has to reach this perfection. Bibi harusi anapaswa kufikia huyu kamilifu for the saints to be resurrected. Ili kwamba wale watakatifu wafufuliwe. The resurrection of the saints ufufuo wa takatifu is dependent on us reaching the same perfection. Una tutegemea sisi tufikie ukamilifu ule ule. And that's what the, that's why the prophet of God says. Hiyo ndio sababu nabii wa Mungu anasema The bride of Christ is the royal seed of Abraham. Ni mzao wa kifalme wa Ibrahim. And if we are the royal seed of Abraham. Na si kama sisi ni uzao wa kifalme wa Ibrahim. What happened with Abraham Kile kilichotendeka na Ibrahim must happen with us Lazima kitendeke na sisi pia They received one Walipokea mmoja who could descend the thoughts of Sarah Ambaye angeweza kutambua mawazo na makusudi sudi ya mawazo ya mawe ya Sara and there was one who was god made flesh alikuwa hapo ni mmoja aliyekuwa mungu aliyefanyika mwili and that ministry of that one na hiyo huduma ya huyo mmoja resulted in a body change ili sababisha kubadilishwa kwa mwili because abraham and sara kwa sababu ibrahim na sara were old and well stricken in age walikuwa wame zeka kabisa but Sarah could not receive a baby lakini Sara asingeweza kupokea mtoto in her old age katika umri wake wa uzee but god came down with a message with a ministry lakini mungu alikuja chini na ujumbe na huduma and that ministry changed her body na ile huduma ikabadilisha mili yao so much so that abimelech he kiasi kwamba hata abimelech abimelech saw her as a young girl abimelech akamuona kama binti mdogo wanted to marry her akataka kumuoa a 90 year old woman ah oh, mwanamke wa miaka 90 what had happened kitu gani kilikuwa kimetendeka there was one who came down kulikuwa na mmoja aliyeshuka chini the ministry for a body change akiwa na huduma ya kubadilishwa kwa mwili son of man mama wa adam akija chini and the prophet of god says na nabii wa mungu anasema as the royal seed of abraham kama uzao wa kifalme wa ibrahim we receive the same ministry today tunapokea huduma ile ile leo as it was kama ilivyokuwa so it is today ndio tatakavyokuwa leo the secret has been made known siri imefunguliwa the seals are open mihuri imefunguliwa we are in, living in the day of the son of god tunaishi katika siku ya mwana wa adam and it is this mystery of the way na ni siri hii ya neno that holds the secret for the body change ambayo inashikilia siri ya kubadilishwa kwa mwili the prophet of god says the word na ndio mungu anasema neno liko ndani yako that new body kama huo mwili mpya will materialize around that word itajitengeneza kuzunguka ile neno the same way it did with sarah vile vile ilivyotendeka na sarah the same way it did with mary vile vile ilivyotendeka na mariam the same word vivo ile neno lile lile is what brings about a body change ndio linaleta kubadilika kwa mwili the open book kwa sababu kitabu kilichowazi the bible says the seed is the word of god na biblia nasema mbegu ni neno la mungu and when christ came down wakati kristo aliposhuka chini the husband yule mume coming with the seed akija na mbegu to come and impregnate the bride kuja na kum 
kumpa mimba bibi harusi that's why she must eat the book ndio maana yeye lazima awe kitabu she must receive the seed of the husband lazima apokee mbegu ya bwana harusi the by the prophet of god teaches us nabii mungu anatufundisha that if the wife kama mke rejects the seed of the husband akikataa mbegu ya mwanaume he has a right to put her away ana haki ya kumtariki the marriage ndoa is consummated ina kamilishwa when the the wife receives the seed wakati mke anapopokea mbegu and the seed is the word of god na mbegu ni neno la mungu and that word has come today na hilo neno limekuja leo come and impregnate the bride ikuntia mimba bibi harusi and that is the dispensation that we are living in today na hicho ndio kipindi tunachoishi leo the dispensation of the son of man kipindi cha mwana wa adam and my brother if Amen. we can flash the slide which shows the the the, the, the cause the bible the prophet teaches us that he comes in three sons names ah uh, biblia nabii anatufundisha kwamba ana, anakuja katika majina matatu ya uana and we must know under which dispensation are we living in sasa tunapaswa tujue katika kipindi kipi cha wakati tunaishi eh because he is a dispensational god kwa sababu yeye ni mungu wa kivipindi and we know that he comes as the son of god na tunajua anakuja kama mwana wa adam so now the, the, the prophet of god teaches us sasa nabii wa mungu anatufundisha he first came as the son of man kwamba alikuja kwa maana ya kwanza kama mwana wa adam when, when he was here on earth alipokuwa hapa duniani he never referred to himself as the son of god hakujiita mwenyewe kama mwana wa mungu he referred to himself as son of man alijiita mwenyewe kama mwana wa Adam fulfilling Deuteronomy 18 which we read akitimiza kumbukumbu na tuati 18 tuliyosoma Ezekiel chapter 2 the na, son of man na Ezekiel sura ya pili mwana wa Adam and during the seven church ages na katika kipindi cha nyakati saba za kanisa he reveals himself as the son of god anajifunua mwenyewe kama mwana wa Mungu the holy spirit roho mtakatifu and then in the millennium he reveals himself as the son of david na ndipo katika utawala wa miaka 1000 anajifunua mwenyewe kama mwana wa Daudi That's what the, 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 the prophet teaches us. Hivyo ndivyo nabii anatufundisha. And maybe uh, let's go to the quotation in 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 in, in, in the, this day this scripture fulfilled. Twende katika nukus leo maandiko haya yamefunuliwa yametimizwa. So, so that is again not me but the prophet saying it. Ili kwamba sio tena mimi ila kile nabii amesema. This day this scripture is fulfilled paragraph 45. Leo maandiko haya yametimizwa paragraph ya 45. He says uh, uh, anasema He came in three names. Ana alikuja katika majina matatu. Uh, maybe let's wait for uh, Bernard um, yeah, able to yeah. okay, um, this day the scripture is fulfilled. Uh, Leo maandiko haya yametimizwa. Paragraph 45. Uh, paragraph ya 45. Mwaka 65 mwezi wa kwanza tarehe 25. Yeah, yeah, So he says he came in three names alna alikuja katika majina matatu he came as son of man alikuja kama mwana wa adam which was prophet ambao alikuwa nabii and that's what he did na hicho ndicho alichokifanya proved his ministry by being a prophet alithibitisha huduma yake kwa kuwa nabii he says we all know that sote tunajua hilo anasema and when the prophet says we all know that we say amen we all know na nabii anaposema kwamba sote tunajua hilo tunasema amina tunajua hilo every one of us knows that kila mmoja wetu anajua hilo he never said he was the son of god hakusema kama yeye ni mwana wa mungu he said he was the son of man alisema yeye ni mwana wa adam now today he is the son of god sasa leo ni mwana wa mungu he returned back and now he is in the form of the Holy Ghost. Alirudi tena sasa yuko katika umbo la Roho Mtakatifu. The unseen person. Yule mtu asiyeonekana. But yet God. Lakini hata hivyo ni Mungu. The son of God. Mwana wa Mungu. In the millennium. Na katika utawala wa miaka 1000. He sat upon his father's throne. Atakati katika kiti cha enzi cha baba yake. He will be son of David. Ambapo atakuwa mwana wa Daudi. So in uh, in the spoken word the trial. Hasa katika neno la neno katika ujumbe wa ile kesi uh, uh, paragraph 229 uh, paragraph ya 229 trial uh, 6404 27 uh, a, a trial kesi kesi a trial mwaka 64 uh, mwezi wa 4 tarehe 27 paragraph 229 uh, paragraph ya 229 
He says um, again just confirming what you've just uh, been looking Kuthibitisha at. Kuthibitisha tu kwenye kile ambacho He says but in the ch- then in the church age nipo katika wakati wa kanisa he is called the son of God. Anaitwa mwana wa Mungu. Now anyone knows that God is a spirit. Kila mmoja anajua kwamba Mungu ni roho. And the, pro- the prophet uh, here the spoken and says and the congregation says amen. Uh, ana pale Okay no this one. Nabii anasema kwamba Kusaniko anasema amina. And the Holy Ghost is the son of God. Na Roho Mtakatifu ni mwana wa Mungu. He is supernatural. Yeye ni wa kimbinguni. Son of man was a prophet. Na mwana wa Adamu alikuwa ni nabii. Amen. Am, e, mtu mwanadamu. David was a king but God is a spirit. Daudi alikuwa mfalme lakini Mungu ni roho. In the church age sasa katika wakati wa kanisa is revealed as son of god anajifunua mwenyewe kama mwana wa Mungu and we believe that nasi tunaamini hilo you believe that he is the son of god sorry if you don't believe that he is the son of god kama uamini kwamba yeye ni mwana wa Mungu umepotea he is the son of god to the church age yeye ni mwana wa Mungu katika kipindi cha nyakati za kanisa so uh, if we go back to that uh, slide my brother tukirudi katika So now the prophet of God has uh, 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 himself said it. Anabii mwenyewe ali yeye mwenyewe alisema that in in he reveals himself as son of man. Kwamba anajifunua mwenyewe kama mwana wa Adamu. As son of God. Mwana wa Mungu. Through the seven changes. Katika nyakati saba za kanisa. And as son of David na mwana wa Daudi in the millennium. Katika utawala wa miaka ya. That's what the prophet of God says. Hicho ndio nabii wa Mungu anasema. So now uh, if we if we go to the next slide. Sasa tukienda katika slide inayofuata. We will see uh, the, that the prophet says something else here uh, uh, in the very next slide. Na uh, tunaona nabii anasema jambo fulani hapa katika sehemu inayofuata. Uh, um, and maybe just even before you go to remember we can just go to the unveiling of God paragraph 118 hebu tuende katika kufunuliwa kwa Mungu paragraph ya 184 uh, the unveiling of God para- sorry 184 sorry kufunuliwa 184 kufunuliwa kwa kwa Mungu paragraph ya 184 184 in the unveiling of God the, the prophet of God says maybe I'll just start reading it as as it comes up he says oh brother sister oh ndugu dada eh uh, Are you catching it? Je, mnalipata hilo? You know, I, I always say when the prophet asks this question, you must ask yourself, are you catching it? Ah, uh, unajua nabii anapouliza swali lazima ujiulize mwenye je unalipata? He says, don't you see it? Je, hamuoni hiyo? It's been veiled through these ages. Imetiwa paz Ime, imetiwa pazia kupitia katika wakati huu according to what god said kulingana kila mungu alichosema it will be opened in the last days itafunuliwa katika siku za mwisho the, those seven seals will be broke hizo miuri saba zitavunjwa and the full thing will come into view na, of the people na jambo lote kamilifu litakuoonekana wazi kwa watu what's taking place all along kile ambacho kimekuwa kikitendeka wakati yeye wote the hour of the seventh angels message katika saa ya ujumbe wa, wa, wa malaika wa saba all the mysteries of god should be made known in that elijah siri zote za mungu zitafahamika kwa huyo elia this last hour katika wakati huo mwisho saa ya mwisho how that christ is put out of his church jinsi ambavyo kristo anaweka nje ya kanisa the son of god mwana wa mungu how he is revealed as son of man again na jinsi anavyofunuliwa kama mwana wa adam tena so he saying here asa anasema hapa kwamba in the last church age ka, kwamba katika kipindi cha wakati wa kanisa wa mwisho he been revealing himself as son of god through the seven churches amekuwa akijifunua kama mwana wa mungu kupitia nyakati zote za ka, saba za kanisa and now he's kicked out of the church sasa anafukuzwa nje ya kanisa that's why when you read in revelation chapter 3 ndio unaposoma katika funuo sura ya ya tatu outside anasimama nje trying to get back in akijaribu kurudi tena ndani and the prophet of god says because he had been kicked out na nabii wa mungu anasema ni kwa sababu amefukuzwa nje he is now to be revealed again as son of man ana kuja kufunuliwa tena kama mwana wa adam in at the end of the church ages katika mwisho wakati 
nyakati saba za kanisa he must reveal himself again as son of man anajifunua tena mwenyewe kama mwana wa adam if we go to modern events made clear by prophet tena katika matukio ya sasa kidhilishwa na unabii paragraph 233 paragraph ya 233 because we we must see that something happens tunapaswa tuone kwamba jambo fulani linatendeka again at the end of the church ages katika wakati wa mwisho wa nyakati za kanisa which is the same thing that happened in the first coming ambacho ndio jambo lile lile hasari litendeka katika kuja kwa kwanza because the jews rejected him kwa sababu wale wa yahudi walimkataa When he came the first time, alipokuja wakati wa kwanza, he came as the son of man. Alikuja kama mwana wa Adam. And when he came as the son of man, alipokuja kama mwana wa Adam, the Jews rejected him. Wale wa wa wa, wa Yahudi walimkataa. And then the dispensation changed to the Gentiles. Ndipo kipindi kikabadilika kikawa cha mataifa. But again at the end of that ministry, ndipo katika mwisho wa hiyo huduma, there was a rapture. Kulikuwa na unyakuo. Acts chapter 1 wa uh, matendo sura ya kwanza we see again uh, uh, the, the end of the ministry of the son of man katika mwisho wa, wa huduma ya mwana wa adam brings about a body change a rapture kuna leta kubadilishwa kwa mwili na unyakuo and then the dispensation changes to the gentiles na ndipo kipindi kinabadilika kinakuwa cha mataifa and now at the end of the gentile dispensation ndipo katika mwisho wakati wa kipindi cha mataifa he is rejected as son of god anakataliwa kama mwana wa mungu he himself again as son of man anajifunua tena kama mwana wa adam and that ministry na hiyo huduma produces a rapture inaleta unyakuo the changing of our bodies kubadilishwa kwa mwili and then the dispensation changes again kipindi kinabadilika tena back to the jews kinarudi kwa wayahudi that's why the prophet says ndio sababu nabii anasema the jews will receive this same message kama wale wahudi watapokea ujumbe huu the message that you and i have received ujumbe huu ambao wana mimi tunapokea back to the jews kusarudi tena kwa wayahudi the end of the gentle dispensation when he is again revealed as the son of man and that's why he says ndipo sababu anasema the seven trumpets baragum saba are to the jews ni kwa ajili ya mataifa the seven seals are to the kama vile vile miuri saba ilivyo kwa ajili ya mataifa the same message Ujumbe ule ule Moses and Elijah wa, wa Musa na Elia take this message utachukua ujumbe huu and reveal Christ to the Jews na kumfumua Kristo kwa Wayahudi because they rejected him kwa sababu walimkataa they didn't know him as the Messiah na kumjua kama Masihi but uh, the, this same message lakini katika ujumbe huu huu revealed Christ to you and I ambao ulifunua Kristo kwa kwa wao and reveal Christ to the Jews utakwenda na kumfunua Kristo kwa Wayahudi the same spirit of Elijah kwa roho ile ile He will again be revealed as Christ to the Jews. Utafunuliwa tena kama Kristo kwa Wayahudi. After the dispensation change. Baada ya vipindi kubadilika. We are living in the day of the Son of Man. Tunaishi katika siku ya mwana wa Adam. Revelation of the word. Ufunuo wa neno. Revelation of Jesus. Ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo. Ministry to change your body. Ah, huduma ya kubadilisha mwili wako. When the dispensation changes. Wakati vipindi vinavyobadilika. Message goes to the Jews again. Ni kujumba unarudi kwa Wayahudi tena. says. Biblia inasema. They will ask him. Watamuuliza. Where did you get the scars? He will say I to got it from the house of my friend. Hey, that will be the day of atonement again. Because they rejected the true atonement. Because of God says. Because the bride of Christ. Because always in Christ. Wakati wote ndani ya Kristo. That's why she doesn't go through the tribulation period. Ndio maana apiti katika kujiki kuu. Because her atonement was paid in him. Kwa sababu kupatanisho wake ulilipwa ndani ya Yesu. That's what says. Na Biblia Mungu anasema, you paid for your own sins in Jesus Christ. Asema wewe ulilipia dhambi zako mwenyewe ndani ya Yesu. Died on the cross. Alipokufa katika msalaba. The prophet says, Na Biblia anasema, God had not yet taken you out of him Mungu akukutoa wewe ndani yake When that Roman soldier came Wakati yule askari wa Kirumi alipokuja says in John chapter 19 chapter 20 Na Biblia inasema katika Yohana sura ya 19 na sura ya 20 that he was dead already Alimkuta kwamba amekwisha kufa tayari And you were in him Na wewe ulikuwa ndani yake He died for your sins when you were in him Ulipia dhambi zako ulipokuwa ndani yake It was when the Roman soldier pierced 
he sighed and out of his sighed he came for the bride but he was dead already atonement was paid for already that's why you don't go through the tribulation period when the Jews receive Christ they are true atonement you know when you go to, to, to you read about the feasts the feast of atonement was a time for mourning let's not even go there but uh, so we see that there is a dispensation change and that dispensation change always happens he, he, there is a particular way that he manifests himself that he reveals himself for the ministry of a body change he did the same thing to Abraham and Sarah he came as the son of man and he comes in Luke 17. He says, as it was, so shall it be. When he was here on earth, he came as the son of man. At the end of his ministry, there is a rapturing of the saints. Which is what Acts chapter 1 is. Acts chapter 1. That cloud. When there, were, when there was a, a migration. From the fifth dimension. From the fifth dimension. To the sixth dimension. Because the Old Testament says. When they died. They went to the fifth dimension which is in hell that's why, that's why the witch of Indor could reach Samuel because it was just another part of hell but there was a migration when Jesus Christ our true atonement he came to die for their sins also the blood of bulls and goats could overcome death Jesus Christ came as a true atonement and that's why you read in Matthew chapter 20 27. They walked the streets of Jerusalem. They left the fifth dimension. And in the in the in Acts chapter 1, they are raptured. They go to the sixth dimension. Which is where they are waiting for today. The return of the Son of Man. It's about a rapture. That's why we must be in the right station. In the day of the Son of Man. Because that's where the secret of the rapture is. That's why he says, my brother, I hope you have it now. Paragraph 233 of modern events. And he says, and today, uh, before he comes, uh, yes, uh, Jesus, when he came, he was to be a prophet. And today, before Jesus comes again, the full manifestation of the person of Jesus Christ is to be manifested in flesh. Oh, brother, sister, there is a coming before the coming. He comes first in you before he comes in his corporal body for you to see him when he comes in his corporal body he must have come into you first and he says today before Jesus comes again the full manifestation of the person of Jesus Christ 
kamirifu ya utu wa Yesu Kristo is manifested in flesh. Lazima adhirishwe katika mwili. As it was in the days of the son of man. Kama ilivyokuwa katika siku za mwana wa Adam. So shall it be. Ndivyo itakavyokuwa tena in this day. Katika siku hii pia. In 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 this day the scripture is fulfilled again. Katika maandiko leo maandiko haya yametimizwa. Paragraph 46. Paragraph ya 46. Uh, you know the, uh, the there is we said earlier that our god is the god of dispensation tulisema hapo mwanzo kwamba mungu wetu ni mungu wa vipindi so we must know and see Wanyakati. who he is today tunapaswa tumjue na tumuone vile alivyo leo otherwise vinginevyo we will miss it tutamkosa and and that's why we say we have received a message tasa ndio maana tunasema tumepokea ujumbe and we must know what the message is saying to us na tunapaswa tujue kile ujumbe unatuambia why did god send a prophet kwa nini mungu alituma nabii he came he sent a prophet to bring a message alimtuma nabii kuleta ujumbe and we have received a message nasi tumepokea ujumbe and we must know what that message is saying nasi tunapaswa tujue ule ujumbe unachokisema paragraph 46 but you notice here paragraph 46 anasema sasa tazama hapa he said anasema alisema at the ending of the church age katika kuisha kwa wakati wa kanisa it had got in such a mess imekuwa katika vurugu tena till he will be revealed again mpaka ile paswa afunuliwe tena as son of man kama mwana wa adam when the son of man is being revealed wakati mwana wa adam anapofunuliwa where wapi at the end of the church age mwishoni mwa wakati wa kanisa it's a mess again ni vurugu tena so that's why he must come as the son of man ndio maana anapaswa kuja kama mwana wa adam sodom and gomorrah was a mess so so doma na gomorrah ni uchafu he had to come as son of man anapaswa aje mwana wa adam to reveal himself to his own people kujifunua moyo kwa watu wake and 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 the jewish the sadducees and the pharisees had caused a mess na wale wa Yahudi wa Farisayo na mafali na masadukao walikuwa wamesababisha uchafu mkubwa. He has to come as the son of man. Na ndipo akaja kama mwana wa Adam. And today, na leo, at the end of the church age. Katika kuisha wakati wa kanisa. It has become such a mess. Umekuwa uchafu wa kiasi hicho. He must come again. Lazima aje tena. You know, the prophet of God says something there. Na Biblia wa Mungu anasema jambo fulani pale. He says, anasema, he says uh, no, uh, no, no, Uh, yeah, he says how appropriate was that mix up yesterday jinsi haswa ilivyochanganywa jana and i hope you don't miss it nami natumaini kwamba leo amtalikosa what is he talking about ana nena nini hapa the day before siku ya jana kabla ya hiyo siku birth pains alihubiri alihubiri utungu wa kuzaa and as is about to preach na alipokuwa anakaribu kuanza kuhubiri as he says as he, as he starts he wants to read the bible alipokuwa anataka kuanza kuhubiri anapoanza kusoma biblia and he has a new bible alikuwa hapo na biblia mpya and now the two pages are stuck together sasa zile kurasa mbili zilikuwa zimeshikamana we know the story tunajua hiyo and, and he tries to open and the scripture is not it's not what he wants na anajaribu kufungua maandiko sio kile hasa anachotaka and that a Roman Catholic Archbishop John Stanley na yule uh, kasisi wa Katoliki askofu uh, mkuu akaja akiwa amesimama stands up anasimama gives him his own book anampatia kitabu chake he gives him uh, his own bible anampatia bibi yake mwenyewe and he says he says uh, this archbishop says to the prophet na huyu um, askofu mkuu anamwambia nabii he says no just draw a breath my son sema wewe tu ebu Tulia, there is a reason it was done that way. Kuna sababu kwa nini imefanyika hivyo. And he says God will bring something out of it. Mungu ataleta jambo fulani kutoka kwenye. This is this is this Catholic bishop. Huyu ni askofu wa Kikatoliki. Stands up from the pulpit. Anasimama pale kutoka kwenye viti. Gives the prophet his own bible anampatia nabii biblia yake mwenyewe and the prophet of God says na nabii wa Mungu anasema how appropriate was that mix up jinsi gani ilivyokuwa imechanganywa vizuri why is he saying that kwa nini anasema hivyo he's he's showing again 
Anaonyesha tena that the same thing that happened in Luke chapter 4. Kwamba jambo lile lile lilotendeka katika Luka 10 Luka 4. Because when Jesus came into the temple. Wakati Yesu alipokuja katika hekalu, the Bible says it was delivered to him. Na Biblia inasema aliletewa gombo. There was another bishop Stanley there. Kulikuwa pona askofu mwingine amekaa pale. Who gave the Lord Jesus Christ? Aliyempatia Yesu Kristo. The scroll Kile gombo. And when Jesus the Bible says he found a place. Na Biblia inasema Yesu alitafuta mahali. And he read Isaiah chapter 61. Na akasoma Isaya 61. But when he reads Isaiah chapter 61. Aliposoma Isaya 61. He doesn't read all of verse 2. Hasomi mpaka mstari wa wa, wa pili. He he leaves Hasomi mstari wote wa pili. He leaves a certain part. Anaacha kipande fulani. And that second part. Na hicho kipande fulani hicho waiting for our day. Kilikuwa kikisubiri wakati wetu. Because there had to be another son of man. Kwa sababu alipaswa kuwepo mwana mwingine wa Adam. There had to be a bishop Stanley. Alipaswa kuwepo askofu wa kikeet. Who again delivers a book. Ambaye pia analeta kitabu. Prophet of God. Kwa nabii wa Mungu who stands today. Ambaye anasimama leo. To reveal the son of man. Kufunua mwana wa Adam. He says when you continue. Anasema tutapoendelea. Paragraph 47 he says. Paragraph we have, saba, he says we have had the revelation of the son of so God. Tumepata ufunuo wa mwana wa Mungu. He says but the last promise that Abraham had. Lakini ahadi ya mwisho Ibrahimu aliyokuwa nayo. Before the son kabla ya mwana kupokea mwana before the son was brought into existence kabla ya mwana kuletwa kwenye kuwepo the promised son yule mwana wa ahadi god manifested himself there at sodom as a prophet mungu alijifunua mwenyewe pale sodoma kama nabii being a man akiwa mwanadamu katika mwili we have had the son of god tumekusikia mwana wa mungu that dispensation is is done Hicho kipindi kimeisha. We are now living in another dispensation. Sasa tunaishi katika kipindi kingine. Dispensation of the son of man. Kipindi cha mwana wa Adam. And and, and in, in a trial paragraph 232. Katika kesi paragraph ya 232. Uh, uh, because there, there is something that happens at the end of the church age. Kuna jambo fulani linatendeka katika mwisho wakati wa kanisa. A, a trial again 64047. Ah, kesi, kesi mwaka 64 mwezi wa ne tarehe 27 eh paragraph 232 paragraph ya 232 eh it's it, it's some it's a very specific dispensation niki pindi maalum it's a very specific act work that god is doing niki pindi niki tendo maalum ambacho mungu anakifanya tena preparing his bride for the rapture kumwandaa bibi harusi yake kwa ajili ya unyakuo to make sure that she is ready to unite with him kuhakikisha kwamba yuko tayari kuunganishwa naye 232 says it says ameambiri do you understand that jesus said unaelewa kwamba yesu alisema in the last days katika siku za mwisho before the coming of the end time kabla ya kuja kwa wakati wa mwisho in that very specific time katika hicho kipindi maalum yes it's in the last days ni ni kweli kiko katika kipindi cha wakati wa siku za mwisho before the coming of the end time lakini kabla tu ya kuja kwa wakati wa mwisho he will be revealed again as son of man atafunuliwa tena kama mwana wa adam not son of god sio mwana wa mungu he is to be revealed as what son of man atafunuliwa kama nani mwana wa adam eh uh, in does god change his mind about his word katika ujumbe je mungu anabadilisha nia yake kuhusu neno lake paragraph 169 paragraph ya 167 does god change his mind about his word je mungu anabadilisha nia yake kuhusu neno lake i'm conscious of that 169 paragraph 167 paragraph towards the close um And, and again uh, you know there's something very specific that the prophet says here kuna jambo fulani maalum ambalo nabii analisema hapa paragraph 169 ah uh, paragraph ya 169 paragraph 169 paragraph 169 paragraph 
that the right one? Does God change his mind? 6504.27. Yeah, I think it's the right one. Is it here? Mwaka sitina tano mwezi wane tarehe shina sabo. Okay. Make sure that we, we gave it to you correctly. Have you got it? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm giving it to you the correct way, my brother. Is that, is that the correct one now? Is that the correct one now? Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Uh, so he says, now Jesus came in three names. Anasema, yesu alikuja katika majina matatu. Son of man, which is prophet. Mwana wa Adam, ambayo ni nabi. Which went, uh, which went through the church age then son of David. Sorry. 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 Son, of son of God, which went through the church age. Mwana wa mungu ambayo ni kupitia nyakati za kanisa. Then son of David. Nipo, mwana wa Dawdi. He says, but in between lakini katikati the son of god katikati ya mwana wa mungu and son of david na mwana wa daudi in between hapo katikati we've just been reading it says at the end of the church age you know at the end before jesus comes again unajua tulikuwa tukisoma kwamba katika mwisho wa wakati wa kanisa au wakati mwisho kabla yesu ajaja now he puts it plain sasa anaweka wazi wazi he comes in three names anakuja katika majina matatu son of man mwana wa adam prophet mwana wa adam nabii son of god mwana wa mungu through the church ages kupitia nyakati za kanisa and then son of david mwana wa daudi he says but in between lakini anasema hapa katikati the son of god mwana wa mungu and the son of david na mwana wa daudi according to his own word ku kulingana na neno lake mwenyewe and according to malachi 4 and all of these scriptures na kulingana malaki 4 na maandiko haya yote he is to return back At, into his church atarudi tena katika kanisa lake in physical form katika hali ya kimwili kabisa in the people ndani ya watu in human beings ndani ya bina, ya wanadamu in the way of being a prophet katika namna ya kuwa nabii paragraph 177 of the same, same scripture says <coughs> if you go down to 177 he says but now he is through the church age now sasa yuko amemaliza nyakati za kanisa sasa he has been son of god amekuwa mwana wa mungu he's past imeisha in the millennium he will be son of david katika uh, katika katika utawanya mwaka elfu atakuwa mwana wa Daudi sitting on David's throne akiketi katika kiti cha enzi cha Daudi that's still coming hiyo bado inakuja but between this time lakini katikati ya huu wakati find by the scriptures tumekuta kwa maandiko that is to reveal himself again as son of man atajifunua yeye mwenyewe tena kama mwana wa Adam a prophet huyo ni nabii. My brother you can just leave that last slide which just shows the dispensation again as we reach towards the close. Now. Amen. Sasa we see where we are dispensationally. Sasa tunaona hizi nyakati. We see that we are living in the day of the son of man. Sasa tunaishi tunaishi katika siku ya mwana wa Adam. And it's a dispensation which the prophet says hiki ndio kile kipindi au wakati ambao nabii anasema just before the end ni kabla tu ya mwisho before jesus comes again kabla yesu ajaja tena he must come into you and i lazima aje ndani yako na yangu he must come as a human being first anaposwa aje kama mwanadamu 
kwanza to reveal himself in you and i kujifungua mwenyewe kwako wewe na mimi as son of man kama mwana wa adam and the prophet of god is very clear na nabii wa mungu yuko wazi kabisa he says the son of man asa mwana wa Adam is the opening of the way. Ni kufunuliwa kwa neno. Is the revelation of the way. Ni ufunuo wa neno. It's when the word has been made flesh in you and I. Ni pale ambapo neno limefanyika mwili ndani yako wewe na mimi. It's the third pool which is the opening of the way. Ni mvuto wa tatu ambao ni kufunuliwa kwa neno. It's the revelation of the seven seals. Ni kufunuliwa kwa miili saba. To reveal the truth has been hidden in the way. Kufunuliwa ule ukweli ambao kwa mficho kwenye neno It's the sword of the key Ni upanga wa mfalme That came into his hand in Sabino Kenya Aboli kuja mkoani mwake katika magenge ya Sabino It's the tent vision Ni ono la hema He says I will meet you in there Amona sema nitakutana nawe pale ndani Same thing Ni jambo lile lile Cuz when When that sword fell in the arm of the prophet. Kwa sababu hiyo upango ulipodondoka katika mkono wa nabii. The voice says. Sauti ilisema. Don't fear. Usiogope. It's that third pool. Ni ule mvuto wa tatu. Which is that opening of the way. Ambao ni kufunuliwa kwa neno. Which is the third pool. Ambao ni mvuto wa tatu. Which is the revelation of the seals. Ambao ni ufunuo wa miili saba. Which is the revelation of the son of man. Ambao ni ufunuo wa mwana wa Adam. Which is the utterance of the seven thunders. Ambao ni kunguruma kwa ngurumo saba. All of these things is the same thing. Kunena kwa ngurumo saba ambao haya mambo yote ni jambo lile lile. And that's why we started with Deuteronomy chapter 30. Ndio maana tulianza na kule kumbukumbu la Torati sura ya 30. The word of God is not far. Neno la Mungu aliko mbali. All of these things are pointing us to the same See. Mambo yote yanatuelekezea sisi kwenye jambo lile lile. When we are talking about the tent vision. Tunaponena kuhusu ono la la hema. It's not a, 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 some mysterious thing that's far away. Sio jambo la kimafumbo fumbo ambalo liko mbali sana. White stone, all of these things. Jua jeupe, mambo haya yote. It was all about the revelation of the way. Yote inahusu ufunuo wa neno. Deity in the form of human being. Kuleta uungu katika umbo la mwanadamu. For for the son of man to reveal himself in the church again. Ili mwana wa Adamu ajifunue mwenyewe katika kanisa tena. That's why the prophet of God says. Ndio maana nabii wa Mungu anasema. The church is becoming the bride. Kanisa linafanyika bibi harusi by receiving the way. Kwa kupokea neno. Without the word, bila neno, she's just a church. Yeye ni kanisa tu. A called out. Yeye aliyeitwa atoke. The word is made flesh. Lakini neno nafanyika mwili. You and I. Ina ndani yako na ndani yangu that's what makes you the bride hilo ndio hicho ndio kinachokufanya wewe kuwa bibi harusi that's why he says in that first seed ndio maana anasema katika ule umuri wa kwanza he says i call you bride ninawaita bibi harusi because you have now you are now receiving the open book kwa sababu sasa mnapokea kitabu kilichowazi neno lilo funuliwa let's read the last quotation my brother hebu tusome nukuu ya mwisho ndugu yangu in the spoken word proving his word katika ule ujumbe kuthibitishwa kwa neno lake paragraph 236 katika paragrafu ya 236 this one is uh, 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 in august 1964 ni mwezi wa 8 mwaka 64 there are few proving his words but this is the one August 1964 Mwaka 64 tarehe mwezi wa 8 tarehe 16 uh, paragraph 236 Ah uh, paragraph ya 236 um, and, and and as we close um, tunapofunga I trust that the Lord has you know the, the purpose of the message unaamini kwamba Mungu kusudi la ujumbe when all is said and done wakati kila kitu kimenenwa na kufanyika It's for you to know who you are. Ni kwa ajili ya wewe ujue wewe ni nani. It's for you to see yourself in the word of God. Ni kwa ajili yako uweze kujiona mwenyewe kwenye neno la Mungu. I always say that this message. Tunaposema mara zote nasema huu ujumbe is to empower you. Ni kukupatia wewe nguvu. So that this same God. Ili kwamba Mungu huyu that we read about in the Bible. Ambao tunamsoma kwenye Biblia. 
same god you read about in the prophet mungu yule ambaye tunamsoma katika nabii the same god that's in our pastors ah mungu yule ambaye yuko ndani ya wachungaji wetu he must be manifested in you and i anapaswa kufunuliwa kwako wewe na mimi you must see him in you and in yourself lazima umuone ndani yako the prophet of god says nabii wa mungu anasema now remember sasa kumbuka that was not jesus talking to abraham there huyo hakuwa ni yesu akiongea na ibrahim pale that could discern the thoughts of sarah's mind behind him ambaye angeweza kutambua mawazo ya sara nyuma yake that was not jesus huyo hakuwa yesu he had not yet been born alikuwa bado hajazaliwa but it was a man in human flesh lakini alikuwa ni mwanadamu katika umbo la la mwili that abraham katika called... nyama mwili wa mwanadamu Al... amen Al... alikuwa ni mtu katika umbo la la, 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 la mwili that abraham called elohim ambao ibrahim alimuita elohim the great almighty yule uh, mwenye mwenyezi mkuu showing as jesus said ikionyesha kwamba Yesu alisema as it was in the days of Sodom kama ilivyokuwa katika siku ya Sodoma now watch close sasa tazama kwa makini in the days of Sodom katika siku za Sodoma he says it will be at the coming of the son of man itakuwa hivyo katika kuja kwa mwana wa Adam when the son of man is being revealed wakati mwana wa Adam anapofunuliwa he says not no more as a church si tena kama kanisa si not no more tazama si kama kanisa the bride is called bibi harusi ameitwa in the day that the son of man will be revealed katika siku ambayo mwana wa adamu atafunuliwa what to join the church to the head nini ni kufunganisha kanisa na kichwa to unite kuunganisha the marriage of the bride Ah uh, ndoa ya bibi harusi says the bride groom call will come right through this kwa sababu bwana harusi atakuja moja kwa moja kupitia hili when the son of man will come ah uh, uh, mtu wa bwana harusi atakuja moja kwa moja kupitia hii when the son of man will come down wakati mwana wa adam atakapokuja chini and come in human flesh na kuja katika mwili wa mwanadamu to unite the two together kuunganisha wawili pamoja the church has to be the word na ka, kanisa linapaswa kuwa neno he is the word yeye ni neno and the two unites together na wawili wanaunganishwa pamoja and he says to do that kufanya hivyo it will take the manifestation itahitaji madhirisho of the revealing ya kufunuliwa of the son of man ya mwana wa adam to unite the two together kuunganisha wawili pamoja to unite the head and the body kuunganisha kichwa na mwili it takes the manifestation inahitaji madhirisho of the revelation ya ufunuo of the son of man wa mwana wa adam and the prophet of god says na nabii wa mungu anasema manifestation is god in man Mwadhirisho ni Mungu ndani ya mwanadamu. It's when that word becomes flesh in you and I. Ni wakati hiyo neno yanafanyika mwili ndani yako wewe na mimi. It's what will unite the two together. Ni ndicho kitakachounganisha hao wawili pamoja. He calls it the bride groom call. Anaita wito wa bwana harusi. That's how the bridegroom is calling his bride. Hivyo ndivyo bwana harusi anavyomuita bibi harusi. By manifesting the word in her. Kwa kudhihirisha neno ndani yake. The bride hears the call of the bridegroom. Na ba, bibi harusi anasikia mwito wa bwana harusi. By receiving the word of the bridegroom. Kwa kupokea neno la bwana harusi. He says do you see what I mean? Je, unaona kile anachomaanisha? He is son of man. Unaona ni mwana wa Adam. Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. Will come down in human flesh about. Atakuja chini katika mwili wa mwanadamu. And will make his word so real. Atafanya neno lake halisi sana until it will unite the church and him as one. Baka itamunganisha kanisa na yeye kama mmoja. The bride Bibi harusi. Then she will go home to the wedding supper. Ndipo atakwenda nyumbani kwenye harusi ya uh, to ya wedding supper. Kwenye kwenye 
kwenye karamu ya harusi she is already united amesha unganishwa tayari we go to the wedding supper tunakwenda kwenye karamu ya harusi not the marriage si ma the marriage takes place here hapa when the bride unites with the groom wakati bibi harusi anapounganishwa na bwana harusi the revelation of the son of man wakati ufunuo wa mwana wa adam is made manifest in you and i unapodhihirishwa ndani yako wewe na mimi that unites you and the groom hiyo inakuunganisha wewe na bwana harusi and then we go from here to the wedding supper ndipo tunatoka hapa tunakwenda kwenye karamu ya harusi we go from here to go and celebrate ndipo tunatoka hapa tunakwenda kusherehekea but the union has already taken place lakini ule kuunganishwa au muungano umeshafanyika tayari and it's the manifestation madhirisho of the revelation ya ufunuo of the son of wa mwana wa adam may god richly bless mungu abariki kwa wingi let's bow heads in a word of prayer sasa tuombe our most gracious and dear loving heavenly father ah uh, baba yetu wa neema sana na mpendo wa mbinguni we thank you again heavenly Tuna, father this afternoon tunakushukuru baba yetu wa mbinguni ya mchana wa leo for your goodness and mercy in our lives kwa wema wako na rehema zako katika maisha yetu thank you blessed father for speaking to us asante baba yetu uliyebarikiwa kwa kukutunenea and oh god i pray in the name of jesus christ na ba, bwana naomba katika jina la yesu kristo that you will take this all little mixed up message Oh utachukua huu jumbe mdogo uliochanganyika kidogo and create a picture for your children na utengeneze picha kwa watoto wako that they may see themselves in the word of god ili kwamba waweze kujiona wao wenyewe ndani ya neno la Mungu that they may be transformed into the image of this word na bwana wageuzwe katika sura ya neno hili and one of these days na moja siku hizi as your prophet teaches us kama wanabii na wako wanavyotufundisha that new body kwamba mwili mpya is materializing around this word unatengenezeka kuzunguka neno hili as, as david said na kama daudi alivyosema the word have i hid in my heart neno lako nimelificha moyoni mwangu that i may not sin against ili kwamba nisikutende dhambi help each and every one of us oh god Ta- tumusaidie kila mmoja wetu hapa as we pray your blessing upon your children tunaomba baraka zako juu ya watoto wako in the precious name of the lord jesus katika jina lako la thamani la yesu kristo amen and amen, amen.